Afternoon, guys. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School, and I'm out here at the hunting camp, which is on the very corner of my property, just about against the pipeline, and probably 150 yards, something like that, from the wildlife area. So one of the back corners of my property. It's a good place to set up a hunting camp. It's a good place I can camp, set up some resources, things like that, to be able to travel out and hunt, travel out and trap, come back to kind of a station camp area between, you know, my house and this. Works pretty well. Also gives me a good place to shoot videos during the hunting and trapping season, or at least during the hunting season. I may change things around a little bit throughout the season. I want to do an ultralight type camping scenario for you guys, and I also want to do more of a traditional type camping scenario for you guys too, as far as a woodland hunting camp goes. I've got some ideas about an ultralight hunting camp that I think you might like. But for now, let's talk about this hunting camp for the common man, basically, is what I would call this. And this is like an everyday hunting camp that you and your buddies might go set up off a four-wheeler, off a of side-by-side. Everything I've got in this camp right now fits in my side-by-side. -side. I brought it all out here in the back of my side-by-side. -side. And there's not really that much stuff. I've just got it packed so that it works well together. And so what I want to talk about today is the camp toolbox, which basically I'm sitting on right now. It's a small truck-style box, probably weighs, with all the tools in it, I would say 65, 75 pounds maybe, plus the weight of the box. But it's easy enough for one guy to pull off the back of a side-by-side -side or four-wheeler, drop it down on the ground and use it for a flat surfacing camp and also a good dry storage spot for things like tools. So I thought we'd walk through that today. If you stay with me, we'll get started. All right, so what we have here is a small ABS style truck box. This one says tractor supply on the front of it, but I recently bought one exactly like this from Amazon that was unbranded. They're about a hundred bucks for the box, but this one here particularly is about five or six years old and i've done everything with this thing from truck trap to nuisance trapping to camping out of my four-wheeler to throwing it in the back of my jeep with tools and things in it and it works great for everything and it's almost indestructible it's got a nice heavy duty lid with a locking latch on it you can put a padlock on if you want to and this is basically my camp tool box all right so let's kind of walk through what's in here and then you can let me know if you think i forgot something because so far i haven't found anything i can't do in camp Bear in mind, now this is not tools for repairs on four-wheelers, ATVs, this is camp tools, okay? So, let's just take the biggest thing out first. I've got one ammo box in here that really is nothing more than maintenance of tools, maintenance of firearms, and it also has a stash of a couple boxes of 12 gauge and a couple boxes of 22. So I keep ammo in here, and then tool and firearm maintenance gear is in here. So everything from mill files, down to sharpening stones, to straps, to swabs, gun oil, gun rods, cleaning rods, all that type of stuff is in here, again, along with some ammo, all right? So that takes up a pretty good space inside here. Then I have a coffee, empty coffee can here, made out of plastic, very convenient for what I have in it, okay? You'll understand that in a minute. So what I have in here is I have a four inch roll of waterproof patch tape made by Gorilla Tape. I have a two inch roll of regular Gorilla Tape and I have a roll of baling wire, trapping wire, baling wire for lack of a better word, okay? Those three things set really well inside that canister very, very easily. And there's some room for some other stuff in there if I need to put other types of repair gear in there, all right? I have one pouch here that has all the tools in it I use to process game from game shears, to three different knives that I use for processing game. And that's really all that is in that pouch right there. But it keeps everything neat and tidy when I need to pull it out to process game. I've got it all right there and it gives it a good dry secure place. So that's in that box as well. Now I have a bottle of kerosene in here. This is just a fuel bottle that I've painted OD green. Put a Pathfinder sticker on there. It's got a silicone funnel on it for filling up my kerosene lantern because I use a kerosene lantern here in camp a small Fruhan lantern, okay? Now, there's a bag of zip ties in here. Multiple sizes, 700 zip ties. I've taken some out of here for things, but for the most part, there's still a ton of zip ties in here, okay? Again, repair, fabricating things, making things work, all right? I keep a couple different types of cordage in here. I keep a nice heavy duty piece of rope in here for hoisting up something like a deer if I need to, things like that. I keep 
about 75 or 100 feet of paracord in here. And I keep a roll of number 36 bank line in here. That gives me plenty of cordage if I were to need it for anything, along with the bailing wire. I have a bag in here that has a box of nails in it. There's 16 D, 16 penny nails, okay? So you can drive into a tree if you need to to hang a lantern and pull out later. We'll talk about that in a second. Or hang anything that you would want to hang. All right, to the nitty gritty of the tools. I have a claw hatchet. This is my favorite hatchet right here. Great for processing game, great for woodworking projects, great for the trap line. Again, I can hammer and pull nails with it. An all around good hatchet that's made from actual ax steel. This is a bulletproof ax. This thing's made by Plum. This one's probably 100 years old. Still as good today as it was the day it was made. I think it's had a new handle put in it. I think I put it in there, actually, to tell you the truth. Um, I bought the head somewhere else and put the handle in it, or it had a bad handle in it when I bought it. So I put a new hammer handle in it. Never let me down, all right? I've got a small Baco Laplander saw in here just to have a smaller hand saw around camp for any task I may need it for. And I have a large bow saw in here with a Sydney Rancher drywood blade in it. Again, this box is big enough. I don't need to worry about folding saws. A big bow saw is good enough for me. One game gamble for skinning medium and small game if I need to. I can make a gamble if I have to, and I can hoist a deer with the rope, not a problem. I have a Charmatini machete, a council tool axe. This is a woodcraft pack axe. I have a council tool shovel pick combination in here. I like really, really well. I have a three quarter inch auger, a large shipbuilding auger in case I want to build something furniture like out here while I'm doing wood craft in my camp. One pair of fence pliers, again, back to that bailing twine and lots of other things. A pair of fence pliers is indispensable to me in any kit, including a trapping kit. I have a pair of skinning pliers here for grabbing skin and pulling it down. They work really good for deer, work really good for lots and lots of things, but especially for deer. And then a pair of bypass shears. We're cutting small things, also good for cutting bone and things like that if you need to on the fly, but good for cutting toggles, small pieces and parts you may need in camp, things like that. A pair of bypass shears comes in really handy. So that empties out the box. There's not a whole lot in there. You know, you've got a couple, three different plier type tools in there. You've got a large auger. You only have one that you can put a handle in to do whatever you need to do. You have one digging tool. That is a pick and a shovel. You have one large ax. And then you have the small hatchet. I'm going to go ahead and put this box in now because I stack around this box. I put it in there. I put that small game gamble most of the time, wherever I put that dude, right beside this box or the spot for it right there. Fits in really, really well. And then I just start to stack the tools in and I don't worry too much about it from there. I put the saw in the back so the blade's resting against the bottom of the box. Make sure I've got room in front for this tub. Make sure I've got room in front for this fuel bottle. These zip ties also go down right beside that box in that slot. I've got my skinning tools, my nails, my spare cordage and rope, and then my two smaller tools that I use most often. I put them right on the top. Piece of cake, and I've got a nice flat surface I can use for a table, for a cutting board, for skinning, for things like that, or even just for a seat around camp if I need it. Works out really, really well. And with that and a couple of five gallon buckets, I like to use these five gallon buckets that have these rotating lids on them with padding better than I like camp chairs because I can store stuff in the buckets. This one actually has my cook set stored in it, my Woodland Chef kit. Is stored in this. We'll talk about that in another video. And then I have another one of these that I also use for a hunting stool and also to store things in. And I have a third five gallon bucket with one of those prepper lids on it, for lack of a better word, that kind of screws on the top and looks like an X on the top. 
But anyway, I keep food in that one. So that gives me not a lot of stuff to store things in, but plenty of room to store things in, and it's easy to pack in and out. All right, guys, listen, that was just a quick walkthrough on my camp toolbox that I brought out here to the hunter's camp. And really, there's not a whole lot of things you can't do with that box of tools as far as repairing anything that may go wrong in camp, being able to build new things and improvise things that you want around camp. There's really not a whole lot you can't do there. Truth be told, you know, you got a good digging tool, a saw and an ax, you can get a lot done. So if you've got a few peripheral items to go with that, like cordages, wire, zip ties, those type things, and you've got the tools you need to maintain the sharpness of those tools, as well as maintain any firearms that you have in camp, you're in pretty good shape, to be honest with you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was really just a kind of quick and dirty list. Um, you'll see me using these tools on and off throughout this video series. So I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, all our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back for another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Thanks.